had an absolute blast at that demolition derby. It has been over 20 years. I used to go see him at the Tacoma Dome uh, right around the time when they did the monster truck there, those demolition derbies. But now they're they're racing like bumper cars and competing while also wrecking their cars. So uh, awesome fun. I would do one of those every year if I had the chance on the road and really appreciate it. Uh, uh, Scott and Terry inviting me up there for that. That was a lot of fun. And for being so accommodating to all the RVs around there. <laughs> I tease them, but they're 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 really nice people. And uh, if you don't already follow Destination Open Road on YouTube, I'll put a link up here and at the end of my video as well. Uh, I find myself back in Thurston County one last time before we head east and get, I, I'd say back on the road, but I've been on the road. So a couple things, I got a few packages here in my post office box here in Olympia. Some stuff I wanna share with you later that I'm really excited about. Um, they are rebuilding the inner city transit station there. That whole building is brand new. I guess they're expanding and stuff. Um, and I turned in my PO box key here in Olympia after some 12 years of PO box 1463 in Olympia, I have finally turned in my key and I'm moving on. I don't understand what Olympia and Thurston County is doing, you know, banning RVs from like, technically I'm illegal to even park my RV and pay a meter and go check my post office box for one reason and one reason alone. That's because I'm driving a recreational vehicle that they have just said, screw it. No recreational vehicles in Olympia, Lacey. Um, however, <laughs> just to check my PO box, this is what I have to deal with right outside my door. It's Tent City in Olympia, Washington. Now, mind you, this is just the walkway where the, where the public walks. And we've got some 400 tent, tent people. Now, anybody see the irony in that? It, 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 it smells like puke and feces and garbage. And uh, Thurston County has no problem condoning this. However, to drive a fully self-contained RV through Olympia and put money in the community is now illegal. Um, and that too is also part of the reason why I gave up my keys and I am saying goodbye to Olympia and Thurston County. Um, it's always gonna be my, my hometown where, where I grew up and went to school and everything. But uh, anyways, let me get out of here. And I told you it was time, it's Blackberry time. There's a good bundle right there. That guy's starting to look pretty fresh. Might be a little tart. But it's ready for my Merv. It's not tart at all. Oh, there's a good bush over there. It's just the whole, you know, latching onto you that sucks. <laughs> they don't want to be eaten alive. Another one right there. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. I love blackberry season. I love me some blackberry cobbler. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Look at it all. Blackberries everywhere. I'm gonna hang out with some friends here in Lacey where it is now illegal to can't like Man, I feel like I could go on and on about this. It is now illegal to drive a vehicle with camping paraphernalia in a public space. I, I, I don't even know what to say guys. I don't know what's going on with Thurston County, especially Lacey, Washington. You can be pulled over and fined a thousand dollars if you are caught in the city with camping paraphernalia. What is wrong with you? Camping paraphernalia? <laughs> to drive a vehicle with a camping chair is now illegal. It's just so scary. Please don't catch it. Like if, if the rest of the world is watching this right now, Lacey Washington is a joke. Do not listen to Lacey Washington. <laughs> just, just enjoy all of their blackberries because they are delicious. <laughs> And abundant and that one was really sour <laughs> but no, i'm gonna hang out with friends and then we'll get back on the road tomorrow out of thurston county i already said i'll go back my goodbyes to family and friends around here so they know it may be a while before i come back so there's that all right i'll catch up with you guys in the morning um two packages remained in my p.o box before i closed my p.o box and i had gotten hints to what each gift was and I'm very excited to find out. I love the purple duct tape there. And we have another box. Inside that box, styrofoam. Hmm. Yes! 
A nomadic fanatic bobblehead. One of a kind, folks. Look at that. It's even got the Bud Light hat on the back there. We're twinsies! <laughs> this is quite possibly the coolest custom gift anybody has ever given me. Let me read the card. Thank you, Ellie and Justin, my uh, Instagram friends, for making this and sending this to me before I left. This is awesome. It's my mini-me. <laughs> and honestly, that detail is pretty stinking awesome. Nice work, guys. This will forever be enshrined here inside Miranda. I put some uh, professional quality Velcro there on there. We'll plop him down right there onto that guy. What do you think, buddy? Should we go places? Yeah, you wanna go places? <laughs> awesome. And there's the other package real quick. Now, I just wanna point out, I have nothing against the WeBoost company. However, customer service goes a long way. I don't care if you're a first time customer or a long time customer as I have had three of their products the lowest star rating you have from one of your customers is still going to be the best you are as a company. I have uh, stopped endorsing WeBoost we products. I don't, I'm not saying they're bad or anything. It's just, again, that customer service thing. I reached out to a couple other companies, and one of them reached back to me. This is a company based out of uh, Canada, I believe, Solid RF, www.solidrf.ca. Apparently, they have been making RV cell phone Wi-Fi boosters. I don't want to call them Wi-Fi boosters. They are cell boosters uh, for quite some time, and they look very similar to what WeBoost has just started making. So we'll take a quick peek at this, but I am going to be installing this on Miranda here, hopefully before I leave the state of Washington. So that is a waterproof outdoor unit. Okay, I don't, I'm going to have to read some directions. There's some pictures of the kit. And yeah, this pretty much looks similar. It has all the cabling and wiring. It's an AC unit. There's an outdoor antenna. There's an indoor antenna. All right, so let me pack up everything. We'll drive south a little bit, get away from home. Like I said, I've already said all of my goodbyes. They know it may be years before I'm back or who knows, any, anything is possible could change. But let's get on south. I need to get to a place where I'm allowed to work on the RV and install this cell booster. I'll get back to you when I get parked. Thank you, Solid RF, for sending this out. Well, Washington has one more trick up its sleeve before I get out of here. It's gonna rain. It, uh, <laughs> so I can't work up on the roof. I can't install the booster today. But I will just put that project off uh, for a drier day, I guess. A little something to remember home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that how you do it? Hmm. Well, since it's raining and I can't do the project that I wanted to do, I want to go back to this new city ordinance because uh, this may be the, the strangest one and the biggest news that anyone is going to hear related to camping or RVing in the entire country. I, technically, I could probably just have made a whole video about this, but I don't want to... I don't want to highlight Lacey too much, or I, I, I do want to kind of make fun of them and, and mock them because uh, pretty much the entire state here is very well known for making ridiculously absurd ordinances and laws that just make no sense and are impossible to enforce. And, and this, one, this one is worth a little more information. I'll pop this graphic up real quick again. This is uh, City of Lacey. Ordinance 1549. And I, okay, first I should also mention that I have some, some other friends and other people who, who disagree with the wording of this and, and, and would say, Eric, the intention here is to get rid of homelessness and people uh, sleeping in sleeping bags outside businesses that pay taxes or, or in the bushes or, or setting up camping and stuff like, like there's a bunch of people that really want to say, Eric, the interpretation of this law and ordinance is this. That, that's great in a way. However, if the law is written like this with specific definitions and, and, and wording it in a way that, that says that it is now illegal to travel in a vehicle in a public area in Lacey with camping paraphernalia. Okay, I understand how some people would have definitions for different words in that sentence I just said, or say, well, that's not meant, but then again, the definitions are listed, okay? The word camp means to pitch or occupy a tent or camp facilities, including a vehicle, 
And then camp paraphernalia, where's that one? Includes, but is not limited to cots, beds, sleeping bags, blankets, mattresses, hammocks, or any cooking facilities in vehicle. Any park, any street, or any publicly owned area within the city of Lacey. Now, think about this. The way this law is currently written, and I understand it could be amended later on down the road, and it probably will be once Lacey figures out what a... <laughs> okay, I should probably keep my own personal opinion out of this. The way it's written right now, you cannot drive any vehicle with camping paraphernalia inside it. That means from your house in Lacey to the campground, once you hit a public road and you have an illegal sleeping bag in your vehicle, you can be fined $1,000 and go to jail for three months because camping is illegal. This ordinance, I, I don't care what you think or what your interpretation or what it's meant to do here, the police of Lacey have to enforce the law as you wrote it, Lacey, and, and, and that's what it is. I will also say I know for a fact I have a friend in Lacey who last night was fined $1,000 for having a sleeping bag in the back window part of her vehicle. So if you have coffee, pot, or, or, or a blanket, or a cot, chair, something, like maybe you're just going to go to a sporting event in Lacey, like you want to go watch your, your, your kid's football game, and you have a camping chair in the back of your car, if a Lacey police officer sees that in your vehicle and you're in a public area... You're breaking the law. You can go to jail for three months. And they already wrote up a friend of mine a $1,000 ticket for having that sleeping bag in her car. This ordinance is terrifying. It, it, it is comical. And I cannot believe that nobody else is making a video bringing this to light. Like, I can't wait to get out of here in a way. But I'm also laughing at it because... How can you, how can you do that? What if someone's just traveling through Lacey? Like... We, we have over 2 million full-time RVers who live in a vehicle full-time, not to mention all the people who camp in Washington State. And they have one city that just says, well, having that camping paraphernalia is illegal. We're going to put you in jail, the whole family. Like, how? How? And then you've got the whole situation with what's going on downtown Olympia, which, okay, Olympia is a different city than Lacey, but they have their own weird laws and rules going on there, too. And, you know... Obviously, these laws aren't helping because the city allows you to just set up tents and camps in public areas. Well, then why are you passing ordinances that make it illegal for an RV or someone going to a campground to even get there with their stuff? It, it, it's, it's illegal to transport our camping gear in the city. So, uh, um, anyway, <laughs> what do you guys think of this ridiculous law banning camping in the city of Lacey, Washington? Thoughts? Let me know below. Have you ever heard or seen anything like this anywhere else in the country? And should we be worried? <laughs> I don't know. But hey, I got a couple more projects I want to do on the RVs. Uh, not just the uh, cell phone booster uh, install on the roof, but one more really, really good one before I leave. So stay tuned. You will see at least one more video from me from Washington State before we hit the road. And we're going to be going, you know, kind of over that way, down, you know, kind of this way. Did that explain it? Oh, okay, good. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.